Hello and welcome to Healthy Living on Trust TV. I'm Aisha Salihu. Erectile dysfunction and male sterility are among the many problems that can affect a man's sexual health and ability to have children. But in different ways, erectile dysfunction doesn't directly cause male infertility. They may have the same root causes and are often seen in conjunction with each other. However, these are health concerns that you may want to take up with a urologist. I have with me on the program today a health professional in this regard, a consultant urologist, Dr. Martins Ibokwe, who will take us through these menacing health challenges in men. Welcome to the program, Doc. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Of course, obviously. Now, we're talking about um, erectile dysfunction and male sterility. Right. So I think we should go straight into male sterility. Uh, say a layman's definition of what male st sterility is. So um, the, the proper medical terminology here is male infertility. Uh, we, do, we don't uh, commonly use sterility because uh, it's uh, a bit ambiguous. So uh, male infertility can be defined as infertility in a man. Infertility, by definition, is the inability of a couple to achieve clinical pregnancy uh, over a one-year period, despite adequate penovaginal sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. um, you will know that there are some key terms here, and one of them is the inability to achieve pregnancy um, after one year of living together and having adequate penovaginal sex. Adequacy we mean here is at least three times, uh, sexual intercourse three times a week, well spaced out. All right. Um, so when a couple is unable to achieve this over a one-year period, we call it infertility. Hmm. Um, generally, uh, as you know, as we know, uh, you have a man and a woman. You need a man and a woman to achieve pregnancy. Uh, so we know now by science that when we have infertility, in about forty percent of these cases, it's uh, the female factor. It may be from the woman. In about forty percent of these cases, it may be from the man, and in about twenty percent of the cases, it may be mixed. Okay, so you just gave us uh, more like a definition of um, infertility in male. Now, does it come in types? Um, no, the, the, we don't call it types. Okay. We can say that uh, we can classify the infertility as primary or secondary infertility. Interesting. So primary infertility is when this man has not been able to impregnate anybody ever in his life before. All right? While secondary infertility is in an individual who has been able to achieve pregnancy with somebody, whether they they carry the child to term and deliver the child or not, uh, and then develops inability to achieve pregnancy afterwards. So we call this secondary infertility. Mm. Okay, so primary and secondary infertility now. At what point does one know, okay, they present with primary or secondary infertility, say symptoms or risk factors? Okay, so um, the bottom line is that uh, you say someone is infertile when they can't have children, mm. basically. So when a man and a woman are married, and they stayed for that one year period of time uh, and unable to achieve pregnancy, then we begin to uh, find out what's going on. All right, so uh, usually we always advise the couple to see the doctor, all right? Uh, the women see the gynecologist while the, ma the men see the urologist. Mm. And um, when they come, what we want to identify is that, you know, their, their bodies are in good shape and okay to, you know, uh, have pregnancy. So let's go to the man, mm. because this is our focus for today. For a man to be able to impregnate a woman, there are certain things that we expect, all right? So we expect, the, wh how we classify these problems are what we call the pre-testicular cause, the testicular cause, and the post-testicular cause. By this, we mean that for a normal man to be able to impregnate his wife, uh, there are some hormones that are necessary, you know, uh, in the body, produced in the brain of this man, they stimulate the testes. I'm sure we all know what the testes are, the two balls, to produce testosterone, which is a hormone essential mm -hmm. for men, and also to produce sperm. All right, so any abnormality in the brain or any abnormality in the development of this man, which makes it, uh, uh, which makes it unable to produce these hormones, I mean, hormones are the luteinizing hormone, the follicular stimulating hormone from the pituitary, is going to make him unable to achieve pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the testicular causes. If there is any abnormality with the man's testes, either they have not descended normally, they are in the abdomen, or they've descended and they've been destroyed by infection or by cancers or being crushed by trauma, 
and things like this, or varicocils, these will not allow the testes to do their job, which is to produce sperm. And then we have the post-testicular causes, which means that the testes are doing their job, they can produce sperm, but the sperm cannot get deposited into the woman because there may be some obstruction along the tract where the sperm is supposed to be ejaculated or released into the woman. Mm. So this is the way we classify them. So I can tell you that in each or under each of these classifications, we have numerous causes of infertility in a mm. man. So it's not just about one particular cause. There are numerous causes. Numerous causes. Mm. And therefore, the job of the urologist is to identify the particular etiology or the cause in the patient you're seeing. Mm. And knowing the cause will allow you to be able to treat this individual. Okay, so what other medical condition does this uh, predispose one to? Say this um, infertility in men, is there any other medical condition that it predisposes a patient to? Well, um, as you know, in the kind of environment we live, um, you know, uh, when it comes to issues of infertility, especially when it's affecting the man, it's uh, a big cause of, uh, you know, disharmony in the home, you know, and um, it causes a lot of depression, suicidal tendencies. Um, and, you know, it's it, it, for those who have experienced it, you can see the tension in the home. So I can tell you that when you have infertility, it's one of the things that actually destroys marriages and relationships. Uh, so this is why it's something that is topical and needs to be spoken about. Mm. So how then do we prevent this? Um, well, some of the causes of infertility uh, in men may be difficult to prevent because sometimes children may be born with bizarre hormonal abnormalities, uh, bizarre syndromes which affect their brain and things like that, right? But I can say that um, the f one of the things that we ad advocate, one, is for women who deliver boys at birth, it's good for the mothers and the care healthcare providers to examine the external genitalia, ensure that he has a normal penis, okay? okay? Ensure that the penis has its opening on the tip. Ensure that he has two testes, I mean two balls, inside the sac. We have seen many times when this uh, do not occur, if, the, if the, the hole in the penis does not, is not at the tip, it's something we call, you know, a hypospadias. It can open underneath and that means when this child grows up and nothing is done about it, he's unable to deposit sperm inside the woman and it can be a cause of infertility. When the testes do not descend into the scrotum, it's called undescended testes. And I can tell you that when the testes are not in the, in the scrotum, you know, God has made the scrotum outside the body is about two degrees centigrade cooler than the rest of the body. So when the testes is somewhere hotter, it begins to damage the testes. And one of the first things that happen is that the testes will lose its spermatogenic function. So for any woman out there who has a male child, make sure that your child has his two testes out. If it's not there, please see your pediatric surgeon or your pediatrician as soon as possible because we need to surgically bring those testes down. So, and then for men, uh, or for women and men who are married and the husband cannot achieve pregnancy. See the urologist early enough. The commonest cause of uh, male infertility in the environment is what we call varicocils, which are abnormally dilated veins around the testes, okay? So what this does is that when it the veins are that dilated, they harbor a lot of warm blood around the testes and it hits the testes up and affects the stomatogenic function. These is something that can be surgically corrected easily by a surgery we call varicoselectum. It's a day case procedure. We sort it out in about 30, 45 minutes and the person goes back home. And in three to six months, you see the sperm spermatogenic function in that man jumping up. He has enough sperm, you know, to achieve pregnancy. This is the commonest. Many studies in the environment have shown this to be because about 60%, 70% of men that are infertile. So it means that if you intervene early in such people, you know, you can reverse it. So see your doctor early so that they can identify what the problem is mm -hmm. and treat. And in this day and age where there are what we call assisted reproductive technology, you know, like in vitro fertilization and co, it means that if a man can produce one sperm that is healthy enough, then pregnancy can be achieved. So I want to encourage people, uh, being infertile is, not, is something that can be treated, that has a lot of uh, things we can do to improve, you know, the outcome in our patients. Okay, so apart from um, through surgical means regarding um, solution of uh, infertility in males now, are there any other form of remedies? Because you see a lot of um, solutions out there across the social media space where some people are preferring solutions that are not even clinical. 
So, you know, just like I've said, um, it's difficult to, you know, go and take some drug over the counter mm -hmm. or take some herb when mm -hmm. you don't even know the cost of infertility. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've taken time to break it down, to make people realize that there are thousands of causes of infertility. For instance, you give a man a herb, you know, to boost his sperm count when he doesn't even have testes. When he's an intersex, which means that his internal organs are that of a female. So, of course, you're wasting your time. So, see the specialist to identify what the problem is. That directs the treatment, and then that gives you the best outcome. So, I discourage use of uh, indiscriminate use of herbal concussions and all sorts of supplements. See the specialist. They will guide you. So, with regards to surgery, there are no risks whatsoever regarding surgeries, right? No, it all depends on what you have. For some people, you may need to supplement them hormones. You know, for those who have primary testicular failure, you may need to give supplements of hormones to increase their male hormones to be able to allow them to produce more sperm. So it may be medical, it may be use of drugs, it may be psychotherapy, it may be different things. So, but when surgery is indicated, of course, you know, you have to perform the surgery. Okay, so we're still talking about males' um, infertility. And now, in an event you've been trying to get your partner pregnant for at least a year without success, you may be dealing with infertility. The problem can stem from either partner or both combined. About one third of the time, the issue is with the man only. We'll go on a quick break now, and when we return, the conversation around men's health with regards to sterility and erectile dysfunction continues. Do stay with us. When you take a tour around the city of Abuja, you may come across people, especially men, gathered at specific locations, waiting, watching, and listening to a naturopath, popularly known as herbalists or traditional doctors, recommending traditional means of healing and curing different diseases or medical conditions such as diabetes, ulcers, malaria, diarrhea, sexually transmitted infections and diseases, high blood pressure, long-term life-threatening diseases, infertility, erectile dysfunction, among others. Traditional medicine has been used by the majority of the world population for thousands of years. The World Health Organization reported that an estimated 80% of the population in developing countries depend on traditionally used medicinal plants for their primary health care, especially for medical conditions like infertility and erectile dysfunction that men in the society face today but are not quite open to talk about them due to the biases surrounding the discourse. John O'Day, a naturopath, says he's been in the practice of traditional medicine for 25 years and has been on this same sport for seven years with positive feedbacks from his male clients seeking remedy to infertility and erectile dysfunction. He claims to have been certified for practice after receiving numerous trainings with certification from the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration Control and the Corporate Affairs Commission. There are a lot of things that can cause erectile dysfunction in men and also infertility. For instance, a man that has sugar issue will definitely have erection issue. A man that is suffering from bacterial infection will definitely have erectile problem. You understand? A man with pie will definitely have erectile issue. You understand? And so far, so good. I've not seen any orthodox medicine that has been able to effectively handle most of these things I've mentioned. The sugar the pile, and also the, the, the next one is what? The sugar, the pile, and the infection issue. You understand? So as long as, as you get what I'm trying to say here. So if you really want to get rid of erection issue, you don't just start from the top. That is what most orthodox doctors do. You go to them, they now give you Viagra to take. Viagra is not really the solution to erectile problem. You need to understand the cause of the problem that you attack to the, the foundational matter or the root cause that you get rid of erection issue. So what we do is we first of all try to understand why you have the problem. When we understand why you have the problem, we now know how to treat you. If it's pie, we have to we treat you based on that. Is we now treat the pie, erection problem will go on its own. If you take care of the sugar, natural because sugar blocks veins. When you have too much sugar, there is no proper blood flow in the cell. So definitely you have an uh, erection issue. You take care of the sugar, erection will come back. Or well, if it's bacterial infection, that is, that is a pamper the erectile parts. That is a, a penal vein. When you get rid of the infection, you have a good erection. You understand? But there are natural supplements that you can use to treat 
erectile issues. As I was talking, we have something like plantain. Plantain contains a lot of iron. You get because naturally, when a man sees a woman, there's a we call it neutral because that lifts the brain, directs to the heart. The heart now directs the blood to the penile vein. The erection comes. But when you have issues where there is no proper blood flow or proper blood circulation in the body, a man will definitely have erection issue. So we recommend most times we give them plantain. We have also some effective mixing herbs that is more natural with no side effects. Some of his clients express confidence in this remedy as they say it's less costly, readily available and has no chemical content that could distort the structure of the anatomy. Generally speaking, uh, herba is a head, is uh, the plant. What we you know, the, the other one is just like uh, the one that uh, they are working, they are working, the medicine are working, Abba is working, the, the English medicine is working, the traditional medicine is working, but the one that works faster is the Abba. Uh, while the traditional uh, medicine takes process, but it works, but the Abba can, it can easily at least, it works faster than the, traditional, than the English medicine. I see it as the best, because from the origin of creation, this has been what God gave to human beings. And uh, there in the Genesis, God said, I have given you the syrups as vegetable to nourish your body and as herbs to heal you. Now, if you can re recall back of old, we understand that our great grandfathers, our ancestors, they, they lived long, longer than we, are, than we can do today. The orthodox medicines, I, I, I believe that the white man uh, did them so that people can see a sharp, quick, quick effect. We are being chemicalized, undermining what the chemicals result will be for tomorrow. And most of the time we are talking about thousands, thousands in the body, and thousands are not good. So I prefer the uh, herbal, that is the local medicine, the natural medicine. They are the best. I want to believe before you start taking this kind of medicine, you must have discovered this probably from a medical person or from a, a, a medical practitioner before you can start using this kind of thing. Because personally, I want to believe if you are using something natural like this, it is more, more effective than uh, all these uh, orthodox uh, medicines. Moderation, they say, is key. Reason questions around dosing and administration of traditional medicine frequently occurs. John O'Day maintains that this should not be the main focus, but the effectiveness and efficiency of the herbal medication he gives to his male clients. Reach an extent where dosaging has not, has not really become our issue because the orthodox doctor, what they do is to go to the lab, they do research on the plants, they come out, we too we go to the lab, we do research on this plant so that we know how to give to people. We don't just come out now and begin to give people half the way we used to do before. Now, the difference between us and them, uh, we try to inculcate both modern technology and uh, the past technology together to give people the best. We don't just focus on one side. We bring modern technology to see how we can further do research on the plants and also know the dosage that we use them, they, they we use the half the way it is. We don't try to idolatrate, we don't try to add, you'll get, we use it the way it is. Limited access to modern medicine, affordability, perceived risk factors are among many elements that discourage patronage and use, while also addressing the local population who would rather use medicinal plants to treat most diseases. It is therefore the position of urologists that males must first seek clinical diagnosis the moment they start to present with symptoms of infertility and erectile dysfunction. With the use of modern day technological interventions to identify the cause, determine medical conditions and history, as well as the extent of severity, the types of treatment to be administered, and effect of treatment through regular clinical checkups. Welcome back. If you're just joining in, this is Healthy Living on Trust TV and Dr. Martins, a consultant urologist, is still with us in the studio and he has been talking about discussing issues around men's health with emphasis on fertility and erectile dysfunction. Now, before we went on that break, you did talk about some treatments that uh, males who present with infertility can 
go ahead and take and then they'll be fine and they can go ahead they can have children right now let us go straight into erectile dysfunction now at what point do you say one has erectile dysfunction all right, yeah, thanks once again for that. So um, erectile dysfunction can be defined as a persistent inability of a man to achieve satisfactory, an erection that is satisfactory for uh, sexual intercourse. So what this means is that it has to be persistent. You know, it's, allow, it's allowed when a man can have an uh, inability to achieve erection on one occasion, rarely, perhaps from anxiety or something. But when it occurs on a consistent basis, then uh, we call it erectile dysfunction. Um, as you know, it's something that uh, men don't want to talk about because uh, it's something that uh, causes you know, a lot of embarrassment, you know, makes people feel a bit stigmatized and feel like... Uh, and then in a patriarchal society like the way we are, a man doesn't want you to take that ego from him. He, so he'd rather not discuss it. You know, and the couple you know, die in silence, not having you know, good uh, you know, sexual relationships. And we all know the importance of sex and sexual intercourse in, every, in a relationship. I mean in a marriage and relationship. It's, it's so important for bonding. It's important for having children and things like that. So um, it's really a topic that is very important to discuss. Okay, so what risk factors do we have attached to erectile dysfunction? All right, so um, risk factors are very many. So, but I want to classify. So we talk about uh, the fact that erectile dysfunction can be psychogenic or organic or okay. mixed. So psychogenic means that uh, in this individual, there's really nothing wrong with their bodies in terms of uh, the anatomy of the genital or the hormones or anything like that. But it means that psychologically, there are issues that are burning. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that for a man to have normal erections, you have to be at peace. So for instance, someone who's, um, who is extremely anxious about a new partner, who is anxious about not performing well, who is anxious about uh, getting the next meal, mm -hmm. who is impoverished or who has lost his job, who just lost a loved one, psychologically he's not there. You know? So some, sometimes this can, you know, um, can cause you know, erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Organic, however, means that there, are, there is a disease condition that is wrong with this person. So there are many disease conditions that can affect erection. All right. So this will start from systemic diseases like, uh, you know, metabolic abnormalities, diabetes, mellitus, whereby, you know, you have a uh, high blood sugar. This causes destruction of the blood vessels that supply the penis and can affect erection. Hypertension as well can do, uh, do the same, you know, because high, the high pressure in the blood vessels affects the inside of, you know, the arteries that can supply blood to the penis. Mm -hmm. Nervous problems. As you know, you know, you require good sensation in a man you know, and good nerve supply to stimulate erection. Mm. So those that have spinal cord injuries or issues where damage to the nerves, what we call the cavernosa nerves that are responsible for erection, yeah, you can have that surgeries mm. and things like that. All right, um, drugs, a wide variety of drugs, starting from drugs that the doctors give you for high blood pressure, for psych psychiatric conditions, can cause erectile dysfunction. And then going to illicit drugs, Drugs of abuse, you know, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, and things like that. These things can also affect erection adversely, okay? Then hormonal abnormalities. I've mentioned this before for uh, the, you know, infertility. This can also, you know, factor into the man. So a man who has a very low testosterone level, who have a low sex drive, low libido. So you can see this in many disease conditions. Many chronic diseases can also affect the male hormone, you know, chronic mm. diseases like kidney failure, liver failure, ETC. So there are so many different things that can cause you know, erectile dysfunction. Now, let us very quickly, let us address biases around erectile dysfunction. Um, I'm aware you, you did mention ego and stigma. Now, I think we should harp on this because men in our society today, because of that patriarchy that you mentioned earlier, and then the fact that they have these there, this stigma that People attached to erectile dysfunction, they don't, they don't come out to address this. They don't come out to seek solution to prevent or even treat in an event they present with erectile dysfunction. How do you think we can address these biases? So, so that's, that, that is part of the reason why this kind of health talk is so important because the solution you know, and the cure to ignorance is more education. So we need to keep talking. We need to keep engaging ourselves. We need to keep putting the information out there. As you know, there's so much disinformation and misinformation out there. So they need to hear directly from the specialists. That is why we, we the specialists, should not be in the hospitals. We should also come to the media so that they can hear directly from the horse's mouth. Otherwise, they're going to hear it from the parks 
and from the markets, from people who have no training. So um, the truth is that erectile, when you have poor erections, there are solutions to it. Okay. And let me, let me shock you. The, the erectile dysfunction could, be, could actually be a pointer to something much more sinister, something more life-threatening. So for those who have heart conditions, cardiomyopathies, heart failure, one of the ways that they can present is with erectile dysfunction. But during evaluating, they realize that they have bad hearts. They are hypertensives. And it's been said that those you know, who die from sudden heart disease, you know, like, cardiac, you know, like cardiac arrest, sudden cardiac arrest, what we call myocardial infarction, you see a lot of them have had pre-existing you know, erectile dysfunction long before them, which means that if they had presented early and the doctors had evaluated them thoroughly, they would have been able to detect that they had a life-threatening heart condition. Mm -hmm. So erectile dysfunction can be a pointer to something more sinister, things like diabetes and hypertension, mm -hmm. ETC. So when you have erectile dysfunction, don't just take it, you know, that, oh, this problem, I don't want to talk about it. Go and see a doctor. You know, it's, it can be cured, it can be treated, and it could also be a pointer to something that could save your life mm. when it's treated early enough. Mm. Okay, I was going to delve into the sides to erectile dysfunction where we'll address um, sex enhancers and also uh, medications and all that. But for the want of time, the fact that there is no much time, we'll would have to have you back here in the studio to talk about this erectile dysfunction because I believe it's a topic that is vast. It is something that is predominant in the men today, although they do not want to address it because of the biases that, and their ego that come to play. So uh, on that note, would like to say a very big thank you for coming to the studio to talk about men's health because it is pertinent that we talk about the men of our society today. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. Although talking about impotence may be difficult, it is important to get treated. Letting the problem persist untreated can put a strain on your relationship as well as, um, as, well as prevent you from having children. Feelings of insecurity and embarrassment often surround the conversation of erectile dysfunction, which prevents many men from seeking the appropriate treatment. It is important to begin a dialogue with a physician to determine, among other concerns, if your erectile dysfunction has a lasting fertility impact or other disease concerns. On that note, we draw the curtains at this juncture and would like to continue this conversation on our various social media platforms displayed on your screen. We'd also like to hear from you take questions and address issues around men's fertility and erectile dysfunction on a subsequent edition of Healthy Living. Until I come your way at another time on same station, I'm Aisha Salihi. Thanks for watching.